Mississippi State, the national champions, destroying Vanderbilt 9-0. WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Duty Noble Field. We are live from the left field lofts with our many thanks to our gracious host this evening from Taste, Craig and Michelle Fancer. Courtney Robb and I are here. We've been here since 5 o'clock, and really this atmosphere is electric right now, isn't it, Courtney? Yes, you can hear those comments. and getting ready for that championship Mississippi State baseball team to arrive right here. The parade just arriving actually to yes. Duty Noble Field. That celebration I just mentioned expected to get started right at 6.15. That's exactly right. We saw the fire truck, as a matter of fact, pull in a few moments Flash ago. Flash and lights it all. Yeah, and everybody <laughs> was getting excited. They haven't quite gotten out onto the field just yet. Yeah, well, everyone is filing into Duty Noble Field as they're getting ready to, again, celebrate this Mississippi State baseball team. I didn't know if I'd ever get to see, and so kind of came out of nowhere in a way, but um, I'm just really excited for everybody that loves Mississippi State. It's extremely special to me. Mississippi State holds a special place in my heart, and it always will, and I'm just so proud of those boys. Oh, it's everything. It's wonderful for our town. It's wonderful for Mississippi State. We just love them. Oh, that's outstanding. We waited so long to be here. That's what's funny. We're out here at the airport, and somebody said, uh, they got delayed an hour, we got to wait. Everybody, oh, everybody's great. I said, guys, we've been waiting 150 years for this day. We can wait one more hour, so it's a great day. Great day for, it's a great for the Mississippi State fan base. And, and, and no, to me, I think it's most deserving for this fan base to win this, this national championship, to get one. All right, this stadium, of course, is a sea of maroon and white, and that is the scene, of course, here at Duty Noble as fans are greeting their championship baseball team. And, hey, if your team wins the national championship, you have to get some gear to go along <laughs> and commemorate that. Our stuff people went shopping. Let's take a look. The phone is ringing off the hook. And t-shirts are selling fast. After MSU's baseball team won the 2021 College World Series Championship in Omaha, fans are traveling near and far to celebrate. We live uh, in Franklin, Tennessee, just south of Nashville in Middle Tennessee. We've got a real strong alumni group there. And, uh, but we wanted to come down uh, today uh, after the national championship and just celebrate in Starkville. Uh, enjoy the parade this afternoon, so we're so happy to be here. Just down Main Street and be unlimited. Folks are lining up to purchase a shirt. The crowd's crazy. We were kind of expecting it a little, but not this intense. Yesterday, we, before we even opened, we had 40 people lined outside the store. So we love it. We love a good rush of people. Um, it keeps the day busy. Retail operations manager Shelby Marsh says orders are nearing 10,000. I brought personally brought from Fayetteville, Arkansas, 1,200 myself in my car. That was yesterday. We sold out of those. So then we had a guy with the 
trailer come today. He brought about 30 boxes. We've probably already sold about 8,000 shirts since we had our the first order happen right after the game started. We've been waiting for this, I feel like, for a long time. We've always had great baseball teams. I think every business is going to thrive from this, and we're all just super pumped and excited for everything that's to come. And like the saying goes, you got to believe. All our national championship tees on the floor ready to go, so everybody's here for the parade, just ready to get their tees to celebrate. It sounds better now. All right, so listen, the fans are packed in here, and every now and then, Courtney, you just hear an eruption of cheers because they know the team is here. Yeah, everybody is out in full force. They are ready to go, waiting with those cowbells. This is the moment that every fan in Starkville loud and proud. We're going to have a quick news brief with Stephanie Poole in a moment, but first let's go to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson for a first look at our forecast. Andre Courtney, great weather there at Duty Noble. Everywhere else, we are soaking up that sunshine. It's warm. A live view from Louisville and in Columbus right now, we are at 86 degrees, so mid and upper 80s. The humidity, though, is gradually going to lower later on this evening and tonight. We are pushing the rain to the south, but uh, there are a few more blips out there. Can't roll out a sprinkle this evening, but the big story, drier air coming in with those northerly winds now, and that is going to set up a great 4th of July weekend. This evening, after the sun goes down, we're in the 70s. Overnight lows down into the 60s, quite comfortable. More details on that forecast in just a few minutes. That's right, and there is plenty to celebrate between the MSU Oma Dogs and the 4th of July. However, if you're planning on celebrating with fireworks, you might have to look a little harder. WCBI's Holly Emery has more on fireworks shortage and how it's impacting Independence Day. When I see the shortages in here, they need to be coming and get them, or there won't be any. Michael Thorne is just one of the millions of Americans hunting for fireworks. He says that having fireworks is a must when celebrating Independence Day. Good memory is just, you know, grilling out, uh, maybe going playing on the lake, uh, you know, shooting fireworks, the whole thing, celebrating our country's independence. However, this year, firework retailers are experiencing a shortage of their regular supply of fireworks. Candy Neighbors, an employee with Orbit Fireworks, says the shortage has hurt their business this year. It has put a little damper on our business. We still have a good variety of stuff to shop and get, uh, but as far as the variety packs, there is a major shortage on it. Along with the shortage, prices on some fireworks have gone up compared to years before. I grew up, fireworks were cheap, and every Christmas, every 4th of July, we had plenty of them around. While some fireworks are more popular than others, Orbit's best sellers are the ones they are having the most trouble getting in. People love to just come in and grab the variety packs because it's got a little bit of everything. So they can just come in and go. That's one of the top sellers. The stuff is there. We just can't get it in. Now, firework retailers tell me that although there's a shortage in their big variety packs, customers can come in and individually select the fireworks to make their own variety pack. It's just a different choice to make as you come in now to where you could come in and grab one container. Now you got to come in and grab several things, which sometimes adds up a little bit more. But hey, it's Independence Day. In Columbus, Holly Emery, WCBI News. Retailers are recommending customers to come in early tomorrow to have the most options available to them. Now let's take one more look back over at Duty Noble Field in Starkville. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the boys are officially back. They have made their way inside the stadium. And Courtney, it's gotten loud in here. It sure has. I mean, they're, honestly, I expected nothing less than absolute maximum.
stadium. They're playing some highlights from when the team was in Omaha. We just heard a great pep talk from Dak Prescott, and that made the crowd go wild, Courtney. Yeah, and we have to talk about just how fantastic it is that players come back and back and back. Duty Noble Field. The Bulldogs getting ready to have to keep that real. Okay, I got you. Under the scoreboard, I am joined by WCBI Sports Director John Sokoloff. I'm Winston Reed. John, you've been covering this team all season long. What's the journey been like? That's an incredibly loaded question there, Winston, and it's one that's meant so much to everyone in the state of Mississippi that's been a diehard Bulldog fan, not just for a plethora of years, but even the short-term ones. There's over 15,000 here right now, the biggest crowd that I've seen here all season, and WCBI's had someone here all season long. It's been an excruciating one, but one that ended with their first national championship in program history. They got out of the Starkville Regional. They got out of a, re a Super Regional against the Notre Dame team that should have been a top eight team in the country. And then they won in Omaha against some of the best teams. They beat number two Texas twice. They beat Red Hot Virginia. And then they beat the defending champion Vanderbilt Commodores in two out of three games to take home the title. Now all these fans get to celebrate an excruciating journey for the fans, the players, and the coaches. You know, to get to this moment, a lot of things have to go the Bulldogs way. One of those things are coaching. Talk about some of the decisions that Coach uh, Lumonis made during the season and during the World Series. Well, I mean, he had a plethora of talent all year long, right? But early on, you had a guy like Eric Sarantola and Christian McLeod, guys they thought would really be the staple of the program. Sarantola didn't quite have command on a lot of his stuff, and Christian McLeod was great all season long, but his last few starts were a little bumpy. So what did Lumonis do? He made adjustments. He got so much out of those great relievers. They've got 10 or 12 guys that can throw 95 or above. He got as much as he could out of those guys, and Chris Lamonis is very worthy of a hefty contract extension. You know, it's really hard to beat a team twice, like Texas, two times in a row, and then to go against Vanderbilt, who started off so hot in game one. I mean, talk about how the odds were stacked against them. Well, I mean, they were. Anytime you're down 1-0, the odds aren't going to be in your favor to win the Natty, right? But this team did what it's done all season long. It was resilient. It was going to scratch. It was going to claw. It was going to do whatever it could to not see its season end. And guess what? That's what it did. They rebounded from the bad inning they had against Vanderbilt that resulted in a loss. And they beat them 22-3. to They outscored them in those runs to do it. And now they got the national title. Well, you heard it here first. We're going to send it off for the break. Thank you for joining us. See you tonight at 10 and 9. All right, weather-wise, yes, the holiday weekend is here. Quite comfortable for our Saturday and Sunday, a little bit muggier next week, but your weekend's looking great. We'll have that full forecast in detail next. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. 
Hard to believe the holiday weekend is officially here. Saturday, lower humidity, 86 degrees, 60 Saturday night, Sunday, 4th of July, 89, warm and dry. Maybe a stray storm Monday, 91. More storms after that. As we get into our evening forecast, you can see great weather across our region. Our Alpha Insurance Camera Network, a few friendly clouds still dancing in the air. And there actually are a few isolated sprinkles and light showers across the region. Let's zoom on in over here in the Pickens County, north of 82, northwest of Reform, also down here to the northwest of Carrollton, a little bit of a cloud burst there, and one rogue shower there southwest of Russellville, Alabama. That's it. Here's the big picture across the area. We had more numerous showers and storms earlier today, but a cold front moved on through and just some remnants of some moisture across our region right now as we check out our forecast. And of course, we got to keep an eye there at Duty Noble. Of course, big happenings there in Starkville. We'll get you back there in just a split second, but high pressure for us coming on in from the north that will really clear things out for our weekend. Perfect timing for the 4th of July. 65 degrees tonight, much cooler as those northerly winds will continue. Our plan of four-year Saturday, a high of 86, and we will warm into the uh, mid-80s across the board. That rain chance, zero tomorrow, and we love to see it as we get into the holiday weekend. Humidity much lower, northerly breezes, very refreshing, especially early and late. So here's a, a wide shot of what's going on this weekend. We will push the rain chances closer to the coast as high pressure Really winds out here. Great weather for our Sunday as we zoom on into Sunday evening. Clear, quiet, 8, eight or 9 o'clock. Uh, should be great weather for some of those fireworks. Hurricane Elsa, can't forget about this, strengthening in the eastern Caribbean, moving back to the west at 30. The latest path on this takes it through Cuba into uh, southwestern Florida and into the Florida Peninsula early next week. It looks like it will stay east of our region. We'd love to see that as well. Here's your AccuWeather 7-day forecast. So great weather for your Saturday, Sunday, Monday, maybe a few stray storms, but the majority of your holiday weekend looking very good. More humidity, better storm chances starting Tuesday of next week. There's your forecast. More on the championship celebration there at Duty Noble after the break. BI Sports with Courtney Robb is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. WCDI sports coverage of the College World Series in Omaha is brought to you by Parker Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, George Sherman Clothiers, and H&R AgriPower. WCBI Sports High School Football Tour 2021 is brought to you by Max South Broadband, Itawamba Community College, Cannon Ford of Starkville, The Bank of Vernon, and Gary's Pawn and Gun. After a season of trials and tribulations, Smithville football is ready to get after it. As high school athletics try to return to normalcy following the coronavirus pandemic, the Seminoles aren't taking anything for granted. There was a, a long period there where, we, where the kids were not able to be in the weight room. You know, we had some injuries, some key injuries, you know, and I feel like that's probably because we weren't able, able to be in the weight room. We lost a lot. We couldn't handle the pressure and we just you know, failed to perform. Thankfully, the Knolls are back in the weight room this year and working to get stronger in practice preparation for the upcoming season. Smithville looks to improve from the 2020 season where the Seminoles finished with a 2-7 and seven overall record and a regular season by Smithville standards. Last year, um, I felt like we were, we were kind of undersized. We were inexperienced. Um, and this year, um, the experience is, is we, we were able to play a lot of kids last year in games that normally wouldn't get play in time. And Following the recent reclassifications, Smithville moves back to Class 1A Region 1. Cullum says it's a familiarity his team is looking forward to. We actually moved back up to our old region um, and some, some old um, competition that you know we, we kind of known to play around here. Um, and I feel like it's, it's still going to be very challenging. It's going to be a challenge. You're not going to win every game either. But I think we're confident in how we can play. I think we can play with anybody. While Smithville's defense will stay the same, the Seminoles plan to switch up the team's offense this year. After losing five seniors, the Knoll senior class has grown to 17, making the experience a benefit for this year's squad. You know, the seniors have been very vocal in, in the weight room and in the dress room and everything. They've been a big help to us coaches and uh, it, it, it's made a big difference. Reporting with Smithville on the high school football tour, Courtney Robb, WCBI Sports. Welcome back, Courtney Robin Andre is now coming at you from the left field loud block as the celebration is underway for the Mississippi State Bulldog National Champions. Right now they are introducing players from that 2021 National Championship team. Andre, I feel like we should just let the people walk. Absolutely, just let the people soak in this scene. 
seen. This is just phenomenal. Players coming out and the crowd is just going wild. I think people all the way in Columbus, maybe even Tuscaloosa at this point. That's the end of this crowd. Listen, these people are here to witness history, and that's what's happening right now. Witnessing history, for sure. This is something that for the rest of people's lives, they will soak in and remember and be able to recall this day. One of the fans we talked to yesterday said they've waited 150 years for this. This is a big moment. Today on the field sits 15,000 people. There's 15 people here right now. That's a lot of folks in here. a lot of people. All right, stay with us, everybody. We'll be right back. WCBI sports coverage of the College World Series in Omaha is brought to you by Bank First, the Claiborne, Midway Marine, and Visit Columbus. All right, well, Courtney, the championship trophy just to the stadium. So and, that was the cheer we just heard. And it looked absolutely beautiful. It was shining like it was sun in the sky, Andrea. Absolutely. All the players are in and uh, the speeches have begun. So in a moment, we're going to hear from MSU President Dr. Mark Keenum and just a host of other speakers. And I suspect when those players get to the podium to start talking, the crowd was really going to go right wild just to show their appreciation to this team. Absolutely. I mean, if what we've seen for the last hour or two is any We'll see you back at night at 9 to 10.